Hey, it's John with Rocket Mountain Unmanned Systems. Hey, we have the opportunity and chance to come out here to a solar field that is approximately, you know, 420 to 450 acres big. Um, man, that is just a whole lot of panel, a whole lot of infrastructure, and a whole lot of different places that we can try to do some inspection from both the panel on down to the actual uh, where it all gets transferred to, to the, uh, to the substation. So we have the opportunity here to go ahead and run you through kind of a little bit of the questions and answers and as well as uh, uh, some of the procedure. We have the XT's um, 13 millimeter, 9 millimeter, and 19 millimeter to do some comparison and to look for some of these problems that usually end up happening in the solar fields as we're moving along. So ho hopefully we can answer some of those general questions as well as try to hit some of the uh, key points in trying to figure out what or where percentages of loss and gains are happening in order to do some, some really good inspections. As we go into this particular job that we're doing, we brought on along a lot of different kind of gear as well as a little bit different uh, PPE stuff, so um, our personal protection equipment. Um, this site requires that we actually have hard hats, we have our vests, as well as safety glasses here. So before getting on site, making sure that you have the correct proper equipment um, in the PPE standards, those are things that we found out later that, they, that those are uh, requirements here at this particular site. As we move on, there's some, you know, some important safety things that they go through to make sure that we don't uh, have any issues or problems while on site. We have uh, fire extinguishers available to us, uh, as well as two-way radios to communicate with each other. Very important when we're uh, like running up and down as far as checking a panel and seeing what, what's going on within is to have two-way radios. Some of the other safety things are having making sure that we are keeping very hydrated during the day. It was 105 degrees is what it was yesterday, so pretty warm throughout the day. We brought a cooler as well to, to uh, keep all of our drinks nice and cool to run throughout the whole day. Um, we additionally brought a, a very large awning that we brought here to, to, to stay in the shade in that 105 degrees as we're running through and charging our batteries. We notice our batteries are getting really hot. The ambient air doesn't let them cool very fast. So even using our cooler to kind of cool down batteries really helped out a lot. Some of the equipment that we're talking about here. We've got our generator so we can move around the site wherever we want to go. I'm thinking that we can plug in a lot of places but that's not always available. So as we move around 430 plus acres, we're able to actually do some um, uh, remote charging if you will. So with our generator, with our charger, we've got a four port charger. Uh, we're able to charge iPads as well as remotes as we're going along through the day. Um, and that's pretty important. Batteries wise, it's really important to have at least, you know, five to seven batteries here. My recommendation is eight to ten in a mobile moving uh, solution to be able to kind of keep rolling all of the footage and, and, and not having any really major stops. To include uh, cooling and cycle time there. So as far as it cooling down 105 degrees, it's going to take this battery a lot longer to try to cool down. So putting it in the cooler definitely helps out. Let's go through a couple other pieces of equipment. All of our cameras are here. We're, we're today using the 19 millimeter, the 13 millimeter, and the 9 millimeter XTs. We have an X3. And as we take that information and dump it, we want to be able to make sure we have enough SD cards throughout the whole day so that we can keep rolling through um, all of our footage and a way to dump them. So we dump all of our footage right into a computer. We have a backup hard drive just in case, just to make sure we don't have any issues or problems in trying to retrieve that data later and we catalog every flight as we go along. So pretty important information that we're trying to convey here. It's really dirty out in this area. So um, as dust is rolling around and we've got stuff that's just getting all over the place, we bring a, make sure we bring a cloth so we can wipe down all of our stuff and keep our lenses nice and clean so that there's no issues or problems with any of that. So taking a look at some of the equipment that we brought on this particular job, having a master list of some sort to go through to make sure that we understand exactly what we're going to want to bring out to site and having good preparation before actually getting here are pretty important to do. Most of the inspections that we do are, are a visual inspection. Um, it's really difficult uh, to, to see internal damage to a panel visually. Most of them will look just fine. Um, there can be connections that are bad that we'll check, um, but 
without the use of the drone and, and IR uh, imaging, you won't be able to see that. There will be uh, limited options as far as seeing how much power you're actually putting out. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see your power uh, production drop and, and that can be an indicator of some problems, but it by no means does it pinpoint where that is. I mean, sure. it can be a vast area um, that you're going and looking at, trying to analyze. So easy, even as from. they come into the combiner boxes, you can, you can still have a whole yep. grid area that you're not even sure which panel it could possibly be. It, um, exactly. You guys use thermal handhelds pretty often as far as yep. uh, in, in your inspection? Yep, in the past we've used uh, thermal handhelds. Uh, that was pretty much the only reliable thing that we could, we could use. Sure. Um, other issues that you'll have, uh, these, these surfaces of the panels will get dirty and that will drop your production as well. And so um, this allows that, that image allows you to know if it's just a, a soiling issue on the surface of the panel mm -hmm. or if it's an actual internal component to the panel. Sure. And so that helps uh, any O&M group that's trying to take care of these sites, it allows them to diagnose it a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we actually were flying this morning, we had actually found a, a very quick um, string that was basically bad. Um, we, I mean, we were only in the air for 10 or 15 seconds before that string actually showed up. So you explained a little bit earlier about the, uh, how the process works and after we have found that string, what would you do further in analysis? Once you've got the drone up in the air, we've got an, an IR camera on there, we find a bad string, what would be your, your next procedure as far as what you would do? So ver it's very unlikely, uh, the, the solar panel ma manufacturers have gotten this down pretty well, so it's mm -hmm. very unlikely that you'll have 10 to 15 bad panels in a row. So mm -hmm. that tells me that we need to go look at connections. And so it's a, it's a simple fix, it's quick, but it is hurting the production if mm -hmm. we don't address it. And, and it's probably not affecting it enough that, that remotely they're going to be able to see it, you know, from a remote SCADA standpoint, sure. production-wise but it does affect the output. And so that allows us to come and narrow it down from several rows or an acre worth of solar panels to one these, string, yeah, one, one this row string, that these might 10, be 15 panels, these mm -hmm. are, you need to narrow it down to this area and start checking your connections. Sure. So final question would be, you know, once, once that, um, once you have figured out that the connection is bad, you figured out that we're, we're able to do, how often do you do this type of inspection how often would you be coming out to actually do something like this in a standard standard inspection standpoint and then as well as possibly using the drone to to uh, check the whole vastness of the whole space and we're talking this has 200,000 panels is that correct yeah. this space alone yep in excess so of 200,000 200, panels. plus panels so what would be that that next that next portion how much time how often do you do you come out and do something like that so we, we come out and do monthly inspections um, a visual inspection uh, that's pretty much what we've been limited to in the past is a, a visual inspection of you know loose cables things that are mm -hmm. obviously out of place um, we we also inspect you know perimeter fencing and things like that and it's a big site so it takes a lot of time sure. and it could be a, a big savings if you could uh, do that with a drone and get good video footage of it and document that um, and then we do one really in-depth uh, scan and visual of the site annually, once mm -hmm. a year. Once a year. We'll come up, we go through every panel, every combiner, every inverter, and we look at it all and make sure that torque values are still there and make sure that it's all Still all operating right the way it should, yeah. Excellent. Yep. Individual cell individual cells yep yep and that that can be uh, manufacturing defect it can be uh, any number of things something hard hitting it mm -hmm. um, it can be um, from my experience the back side of the panels are really uh, it's kind of like the underbelly of a shark you know the very top exposed side is, yes. yeah, is, is built to take a blow with the plexiglass and those things but um, you know, workers carrying them to putting them in place and putting their head on the back of the panel. Yeah. Um, I've seen stress fractures from that and, and things like that. that so nature. you can easily pop some of the solder joints yep. that are inside just by even simple install. Yep. Even, even after finding a, an initial problem or initial install, you can, you can create some damage that, that you didn't know once you take over a, a section or start to do your, your maintenance and operations. Exactly. So, so the, the manufacturers are generally really good about they, they take images of these 
mm -hmm. uh, before they send them out to make sure that their quality is up up to standard. And so, a lot of times it is a field issue, and it might not show up for the first year. It might show up a little bit later. Somebody damaged it, and it's just degrading over time. Sure. Just investigated and are coming up a little bit closer to do an actual visual inspection on the panel. As we get a little bit closer here, we can see this white spot. You can see where my shadow is starting to cover. And this white spot right here is actually the section that we're evaluating or trying to take a look at doing the inspection. Um, it's still showing up as possibly having a problem even though my shadow is creating a, an issue as well. Um, where the heat comes from is as this is producing electricity and current, uh, if there's any internal damage to the panel, to the, the electrical components inside here, these fine little um, soldering points, sometimes they'll fail and it, it generates heat um, as, a, as opposed to generating electricity. And so that's, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for damaged spots um, that indicate a bad solar panel uh, because it cuts our production down. So. So if we come into a little bit closer inspection, as you had talked about smacking the cells or, or carrying them around, you can actually pop these little solder joints, which in series, all of these panels are actually all in series with each other, which could affect all single rolls within that, that single one panel. So you can have a, a whole row or sections of rows as we, as we see all of our joints that are coming in together. And as they come out of the back of the panel, you can have this just half section be bad because it's got a broken solder joint just right here. Yep. Just a, something so simple. So as far as some of the possible problems that we could have, we talked about um, the string. So what, you know, kind of what are we looking at as far as a string goes? What, what do you've got going on there? So a lot of times you'll have 10 or so panels, mm -hmm. uh, 10 to 15 panels hooked together and uh, you'll get a section, the whole string that, that is showing up weird on the, the IR scan, the image. A lot of times, like I mentioned, was a, it's a connection issue because you're very unlikely to have that many panels damaged. Oh, all uh, at all once. Of them. These strings are, are combined together and they, they're sent down here to a, a combiner box and as they track the sun to try to keep a constant uh, current, mm -hmm. um, we combine them together, small wires into one big wire uh, we're putting about a thousand volts DC and uh, send it over here to the inverter where it is uh, inverted into AC or usable power that we can use and sent to the grid. And so little problems at this level um, get amplified as it goes out. You'll, you'll drop your production down. Um, these can actually act as a load if there's a if there's an electrical short in it. Mm -hmm. They can act as a load as opposed to producing power. Okay, so we're back here in the office after doing our um, solar inspection out at, at this uh, site and we had found that there was a, a lot of questions that we had uh, when we first started the inspection process uh, working with one of their solar techs and working with the, um, the guys that do a, a lot of the op operations and maintenance of these facilities and areas. We had found that that, that initial um, flights of the drone and getting it up in the air were very helpful in managing or mitigating some of the initial problems that, that might show up, finding strings that were bad as well as uh, other n initial problems right off the get-go. As we came down to kind of deciding whether or not to use certain type of cameras, we used a 13 millimeter, 9 millimeter, 19 millimeter XTs on the 640, and we found that pretty much all cameras worked really well in, in all ways, but in different heights, of course, is how you take advantage of using the the different lens or focal lengths of, of, the, um, of the actual cameras. All of them worked in fantastic. They were all capable of uh, detecting and seeing the same um, issues and problems as we went through it. And again, that, that, was, that was something that we really wanted to find out is how quickly we could, we could find some of these problems. Um, as we were looking at more individual portions or individual parts of the cells, Earlier in the day, those worked really well to be able to see some of the bad individual cells, but as we got on to closer to solar noon, we became, it became a little bit more difficult to try and uh, see those problems as the panels continually heated up for, throughout the day. Strings still showed up very well, again, with all of the cameras, 
but in a general sense, the, the, it was harder to see um, any of the, the initial smaller problems with, uh, with, the, with the sun getting up higher and the panels getting hotter. We had a lot of different difficulties with the reflection of the sun as we kept, got up a little bit higher, which makes it even that much more difficult to do any type of mapping in thermal. We were able to take an X3 out and actually do a full ortho of about a 30 acre space and we compared that to trying to map out that same space in thermal. It was very difficult to try and get the same um, not reflectance of sun and, and the d images to shift and change just a little bit in the thermal spectrum and it, it was a little bit more difficult to try and map out those sections. So on our example here of the ortho we can then maybe use more um, specific spots after doing an initial flight to find problems and issues within a section that we actually did do an ortho or, or a mapping of a, of a space. Um, a lot of the techniques that we're using here are fairly new in this solar inspection industry. We're, we're to a point just just starting the, the, the tip of the iceberg here on using these types of tools, a flying thermal camera, a ortho or creating map generations and as well as such a large space at 400 plus acres um, that can be a lot of information to try and and create and make and do to both show it in thermal imaging as well as standard imaging. So. Thanks for again for, for allowing us to uh, kind of go through this uh, and, and give you the, the uh, experience of what we had and hopefully in the future we'll be able to do a little bit more um, standard operating procedures in, these, in using these kinds of techniques and tools.